Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky from Blue Cat, Sco Blue, Blue Cat Studio. Let's see if I can get that out right today. Um, welcome to our Technique Tuesday, but we're doing it on Wednesday because it's been one of those crazy days. So we're going to talk about composition. And today's archetype, we'll call it number two, is going to be the pyramid. So let me just sketch that out so it's kind of crystal clear. Very, very simple, right? Pyramid. Ooh, everybody can draw a triangle, right? Okay, cool. So let's talk about some of the ways that a pyramid can actually be found in a composition. Now we're covering some of these fundamentals because it really helps when you're trying to come up with original art and you're not quite sure where to get started. Sometimes you can begin with one of the archetypes and it will help you sort of format and structure what you're trying to do. So if we think of the pyramid as archetype number two, we could do a mountain right here in the middle, right? We can kind of do this and maybe add some little peaks, a little something. We still kind of mostly have that triangle shape. Let's show, yep, that is showing up. Okay, okay, good. So, you know, that's an idea and you could have all sorts of, you know, whatever you want going on in here, but you still primarily have a nice pyramid. Hey there, Linda, thanks for joining. So here's another one. And um, some of you have probably been seeing this for all your lives and never really noticed it. But we've got this woman here who maybe has a veil and she's looking down and she's holding a baby and maybe and that might be the baby Jesus right there. And I'm not super Christian, but this is almost always Mother Mary is almost always portrayed in a triangle or pyramid composition with John the Baptist kind of hanging out right here as a little dude. I'm not going to try and paint that, but hopefully you can kind of see how we've sketched out that concept of the arms of the mom, the baby her head here, and then the little dude right here, and they all just kind of form the pyramid. So that being said, um, you know, we could also do this with our, our buddies, the polar bear, right? We could do the polar bear. I don't know, maybe give him his pause. If we even stick to the same, the same sort of format that we had the other day when we did our Tech Tuesday with the polar bear eyes and then maybe actually he's almost pyramid shaped there but if you wanted you can even have one of his buddies kind of peeking out on either side or maybe it would be like this would maybe be the mama bear with her little with her little cubs sticking out i don't know just an idea but those are different ways that you could still kind of form the concept of a pyramid now he would be even more pyramid shaped if his ears were smaller and he had his little little fluffy hat on does that make sense how we came to that? I know my I start to get all sketchy and then you sort of lose the concept. So if I sort of flesh that out a little bit here. And then we have well, our bear again with his cute little paws. Bear with his cute little paws. You know, I think I forgot to post the tracer for you guys on for the last bear. So you can tell me if you still want it. Have our little guy here, eyes, ears. Maybe a little dude right here again ears and you can see how that has now formed a pyramid so i'm thinking maybe we should just have some fun and paint some mountains because i am feeling rather tired today and so i'm thinking that maybe we just keep it simple yeah because again so i you know i yesterday the reason i delayed and i can give you guys more details on it today um many of you know i'm divorced and so you know kids dad lives separately from us and you know he has partial custody of the kids just as I do um but like you know he, the kids came over to my house on Friday and we all went skiing and then I guess he got exposed to COVID on Saturday and just tested positive so now um you know he's unable to and you know the kids are always so active and so busy they're constantly doing something that we've um you know that now I'm kind of covering everything instead of him being able to do that stuff, obviously for safety reasons. So tonight, you know, it was, you know, running a Boy Scout. So, you know, often like all the duties that we usually split because we are really amicable and all that good stuff um, I'm covering right now. So if you're like, where is she? That's what's happening. We're just kind of covering. All right. So we've just kind of sketched out some mountains. I'm kind of keeping them craggy, but you notice I'm sort of still sticking to that concept of, of a triangle. And let's see what, oh, hey, let's get a palette to throw some paint on here. 
I think most of my palettes are pretty, pretty messy and I'm feeling purple. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm going through my purple phase. Everyone goes through like a color phase. I think I'm going through my purple phase and I'm just going to grab some dioxazine or dark violet. It's a deco art color dioxazine, nice and dark. I always love flipping it that way. I feel like it's a better view. And then maybe some purple pizzazz, which is a little bit of a pinker, pinker tone purple. You can kind of see the difference there. Some white. And I don't know, maybe we'll mix in some, some pink with it or something. I don't really know. I don't know. Yeah, well, just, I'm, okay, I'm grabbing some bubblegum pink. I'll buy bubblegum pink by the, by the barrel. So I actually have it in this big thing, but here's what it looks like in the small, in the small thing. So again, we're kind of staying analogous color scheme, right? but kind of on the pastel side and we will let's see so if we want this to be kind of in the front and center we could probably go darkest in front and then fade it out so we'll just begin with some straight purple violet here just kind of again get craggy and i'm going to keep this very very simple i think i think <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, Linda. Yeah, family first for sure. All oh, the joys of of mom of momming. And of course, I always love. I'm like, oh, bonus time with the kids. I'm down. Like one of my most favorite things is actually driving my son to his rock climbing class because that's our opportunity to like. It's like a full hour in the car where he has nobody to nobody to talk to except for me. So I'm like, woo! I'll take it. All right, so just adding a little bit of that purple. And I don't really have a plan for this yet, so we're just kind of we're just kind of riffing, but we're again trying to illustrate the concept of the pyramid composition. And let's see, I think we'll grab some, I'm not gonna rinse. Grab a little bit of pink over here, bloop. A little bit of purple pizzazz. I'm just gonna smush them together. See what happens. It's a nice light purple, very pinky purple. Hey Holly, good evening, good evening. I'm so glad you could join us. Now I feel like this is the darkest, so and it's in front. This guy here is gonna be the next, and this will be the lightest. And since for some reason I gravitated to pink, oh, you know, how did that happen? Um, I figure I'll just put this guy in the back. And then we'll go with a, the mid-tone in a second. Was this necessarily the wisest way to begin a composition? Maybe not. But again, with this, with this particular um, session and, and in general, I'm really trying to put more emphasis on the concept of composition as opposed to a, a finished piece where then we just kind of take an idea and kind of run with it. So I actually try not to plan too much in advance other than, hey, here's the idea I want to talk about. And here's the, you know, here are a couple of examples of how it could be done. Um, but I don't really plan ahead in terms of color and whatnot. Again, I'm really, I'm really here to sort of show you guys how on the fly with some ideas you can begin to create a design. So I'm just grabbing the purple pizzazz, no rinsing of the brush and kind of placing that in the mid. I'm hoping that these ranges of colors kind of darkest mid and lightest in terms of the purples will help add that sense of depth. If I wanted to go hog wild, I'd probably add some, some pale blues in here and maybe some navies to add some shadowing and just to kind of keep it interesting and maybe stay within the analogous color scheme. All right, and then I'm gonna take that mid purple kind of through here a little bit, grab some white just straight off the, the palette and Kind of smudge it along a little bit more of the purple and i think i'm going to grab some of the dioxazine and maybe kind of wiggle waggle a little bit of shadow in there a little bit more white to just kind of whoops to finish off so this is just a basic sketchbook this is one of those i don't even know what brand it is I want to say I got the sketchbook in college and then ignored it and didn't use it and was too afraid to paint in it. So I'm really glad that like 20 plus years later, I finally decided it was okay to paint in my sketchbook. 
All right, so I don't like the way this ends right here. I'm gonna grab just a smidge of dioxazine and have it kind of creep right back up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Or peter out or something. It was just too, it was too stark for me. Too stark an ending. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, that'll do. Filling in a little here and there. And so even something as simple as this just kind of makes for a fun, a fun project. Now, where's my thing for offloading? Oh, you guys, I'm always, oh, there it is. Okay, so now for the sky, mm, let's go, let's do a pale, pale pink. Take the pink over here, grab some white and smush together something, ooh, much lighter, please. There we go. I think we'll do, yeah, we'll do a paler pink sky. I'm just gonna grab white since I've got some of that color already on my brush. That way I get a really, really light tone up here. And I especially want it to be lightest right up near the middle peak, just because it is the lightest. And if I choose to do almost like a sunsetty kind of um, color scheme on the way down, it's okay if it starts to get darker as I approach the darker mountains, but I don't really want it to be too dark. Otherwise we'll get like this muddy look and you won't be able to be able to differentiate. Okay. So now we'll just grab a little bit more of that kind of mid pinky color and start to start to work it in here along that. And I'm working with very wet paint and I'm kind of going over some of those lighter pinks that I just did and allowing the pink to blend a little bit. Now I'll tell you, I am already feeling like I just want to add some magenta in here. So we might need to do some magenta. Any votes for magenta? I'm gonna rotate real quick so that I can just kind of edge right on up in here. And again, this may not be like my, my best piece of art by any stretch, but you know, the point is really that we're just here kind of playing with ideas, playing with colors, illustrating, you know, how you can take an idea and turn it into, really turn it into a piece of art, even if it's not your best art. Any art that you do, is still a million times better than the art project that you never that you never started. And guaranteed, especially if you're new and actually almost for everybody, we're always learning. So even just doing something and trying something and taking risks, even if it turns out awful, is um is still very worthwhile. So Holly says quinacridone can't spell, but I was just thinking you were missing it. Ah, see, great minds. Holly says she votes I should use some quinacridone. Although now it's kind of turned out well. So quinacridone is like the most glorious magenta on the planet. The Liquitex Basics version is beautiful. I will tell you, I do not like the Artist Loft version of magenta. I feel like it's lacking. All right, now, that, oh, looky. Okay, how do we want to use that? I know, I know, I know. So I think that we've got such a pale sky that this quinacridone is going to be a little, a little much horrific. But I still want some of that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at how beautiful that is. So I can't wait. I think I'm trying to debate whether like a beautiful like teal or quinacridone is going to be my first, is going to be my first purchase from the, from Golden. Because I'm planning on starting to... Uh, accumulate a couple of like uh high end you know starting to build my high end uh paints collection all right so i just adding a little bit of quin quinacridone into whoop, into the mountain kind of to help add a little bit of a pop and a little bit of it's it's going to be kind of subtle but my hope is that it it different differentiate god i cannot talk today it differentiates um Sort of the foreground with the rear. And I like that now also because it's added a, a bit of richness. So I've got some white mixed in on this one. I think I'm gonna grab just a pinch, a pinch of the pink, put some quinacridone in. So that little tiny bit of pink, white, whatever, it's gonna add a little opacity and lightness to this so that we kind of get some, some variation there. Again, it's 
quinacridone is a fairly translucent color. So I'm just kind of mixing a little bit of the pink and get myself over here at an angle because from where I'm standing, my lights are so bright, I'm getting a lot of glare. So I'm almost like, what is happening there? So we got a little base in there, maybe a little more of this pink coming down. So again, you know, we start with a really basics. And if you just stop at the, like the three purples, you've already created something cool. But as you want to begin to add a little complexity, a little interest, here's where mixing can become interesting. So I don't want it to be completely quina. So I'm going to grab a little of the quina over here, a little mix, a little, a little more of my dioxazine. Ugh. Drop my brush and screw up. Maybe we can turn that into like some happy little trees or something. Here we go. We're just going to kind of roll with it and bring some of that out here. I don't even know what it is. We're not going to worry about it, but we're just going to, we're just going to kind of play with it and make it, make it work. Yeah, yeah just, just go with it. In fact, we'll even... Here's where we can have a lot more of the pure quinacridone. It's gonna be right here in that sort of field or plain at the base of the mountains. Bring a little bit more of the dark down here. Again, I'm sort of starting to think about like depth, kind of overlapping bits. Right in here is a little iffy. So we'll just, we'll tweak a little, we'll tweak. Oh, here we go. So I had a lot of like other color hanging out at the upper portion of my brush. So I find even if I just kind of press down and offload in some ways, kind of right in there, I get a little bit of a blend. So, you know, we got something going on here. I'm going to give it a quick blast of drying. Where's my dryer? Just to kind of see where we are. Again, I've got such a high, a high glare from my lighting that I'm having trouble seeing actually what colors I've got here. And Holly says, aren't the mountains... Majesty. Oh, Purple Mountains, Majesty. Blah, blah, blah. Somebody needs to come sing the rest of the song for me because I am not musically inclined. That's why I took art history class, which is also why I can, you know, tell you with all, all certainty that the, that the Madonna and Child are almost always portrayed in a pyramid composition scheme because that was one of the primary subjects of art in the medieval and renaissance times it was like all people painted they didn't really paint for pleasure the way we do it was more they painted and the church was always their patron so it reminds me like when i went to the uffizi gallery in um in uh florence it was like going home and, and seeing like long lost brothers and sisters all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna go move my way backwards now get a little bit more into these purple peaks here. And I want to make sure that I've got good color differentiation right along the edges here, where these two kind of come together. But I think maybe a little, let's just take a little bit of that dioxazine, kind of blend it along the edges, all right, I'm doing a so-so job of blending it, because I've got a lot of very, very wet paint here, so it's kind of, kind of cooperating, kind of not. Just lay the base in there and just kind of pull down a little, it just keeps it interesting, right? And then maybe a touch of white. Again, I'm just, I am riffing, I'm just kind of having fun going with it, just sort of whatever sort of happens to happen is, is what's happening. Did I say happen enough? And maybe a little bit of, light in here, which is quite a bit of light. So I'm going to offload my brush to get rid of the excess. And now I'm going to continue that blending just with that sort of offloaded semi-dried or, you know, less pigmented brush. And then I can come back in with a little bit more of the dioxazine to just kind of tone that. So this is drawing a very sort of weird plummy color. I'm not 100% sure I approve, but we'll figure it out. Now coming back to this guy, again, that was the, what was that? It was pink and pink and the, what do you call it again? Purple pizzazz. So we'll do a little bit more of that. Just kind of come in, add a little bit more. And then again, I'm going to get a little bit of the purple pizzazz kind of along the edges to intensify some of the borders. 
And it just adds a little texture, keeps these from feeling completely flat. You could, of course, do these completely flat, and it would still be a pretty cute, fun composition, kind of like a cool sticker you could find on Etsy. I always feel like I get to Etsy level, and then I just blast right past it and kind of sometimes go a little over the top. Extra, right? We already know extra is a thing. Hey, Carrie, of course you love the colors because it's purple, and I know you. You like purple. Okay, this right here is bugging the crap out of me. I feel like the differentiation is really not enough. So I'm just going to take that little bit of pinky purple that I've already got on my brush. Just start to work my way up a little bit. And I'll tune up those edges in a second. They're, they're, a, little, they're a little rough right now. But again, when you think about values, you have to you kind of work to get that good blend of lights and darks. And if you have all your dark edges coming directly together, then you just have mush and the eye starts to get frustrated because it can't, can't readily make out, ah, oh, that worked, um, the borders and the differences. And it just becomes kind of busy. So again, just soften because I have two sets of, you know, the light and the dark that, or medium that are both kind of wet. I can just kind of come back, but I also just did a quick offload. So now you have the lightness, you have the dark. And so now you've got kind of three layers here. So Holly says, is there an advantage to taking long breaks between offloading brush? Um, if you, it, great question. So that's going to depend very much on the artists themselves, right? Um, if you're piling a ton of, of paint on your brush and you feel like your brush is overloaded, offload. I tend not to completely overload my brush, and so I can usually get away with, with longer periods of time. Now, I feel like I overdid the, the quinacrid on here, so I'm going to kind of come back. I want it a little bit more in the blue tone here, so I'm going to say that the dioxazine is a little bit more blue tone. So, yeah, Holly, if you feel like you've got kind of a mess going on, then it may be in your best interest to offload more often than I do. So I just come in and I get like small amounts of, can you see that? Small amounts of paint. So that I don't have to offload too much. So I'm just trying, I want, I want a little bit of the, the, the magenta, but it was, it was too, it was too much. It was driving me bonkers. And so I'm just using kind of the little tiny bits that are left in my brush to help lighten there. And then I think we'll add a little bit more of the dioxazine kind of to the edges just to help kind of frame it. But again, I don't want any real lines to show. I don't want it to feel like I just drew an L, even though I'm kind of going with some L shapes here. But I feel like the purple will kind of do a, a nice kind of framing, a little bit more white in here just to kind of add a little bit. Oops, that's too much. Just smudge it. It's cool. And again, you know, we're just kind of making this up like on the fly, right out of our brains. I don't have a reference material. So some days I nail it and some days I really just don't. We might be somewhere in between on that one today. Just trying to get like, again, enough differentiation between mountains and the other thing. So now, oh, you know what? Somebody the other day was, was mentioning that they struggle with clouds. So I'm wondering, should we try some clouds? This is still a little funky. Oh, sorry. I just, I'm like, it's driving me nuts, but should we do clouds? I hope I don't mess up the clouds. Should we try some though? Okay. That's a little, we're getting there. I still want a little dark. I'm sorry, you guys, I could work this forever. I got, I got to stop this section, don't I? We'll tidy it up later when we figure out what we actually want to do. Okay, well, we'll do something. All right. Please let me carry off clowns today. <laughs> okay, so I'm offloading my brush again because we're kind of working the same color zone. I don't actually feel the need to fully rinse it because I'm going to do some kind of purpley whitey things. So we will begin more in the darker tone, although still not dark. So actually, I've got this guy right here, which is a little bit of the dioxazine, big hunk of white. 
a little bit more dioxazine. So I want a more bluish purple. I've got a lot of paint on my brush. So we'll do some clouds right in here. So I'm just going to kind of dab some color in, kind of creating like a, there's too much breath, too much paint. I need to offload a little bit here. I want it to be a little bit more dry. So that I'm just kind of placing, placing some color in here. So we're kind of just a little bit flatter along the bottom and kind of letting it get a little wispy on the sides. This might mess a bit with our, our with our pyramid composition, but if we can keep the keep the clouds subtle enough, then we can probably get away with probably get away with it. So again, I'm starting with just that base tone. I can already tell you I'm going to want a little bit deeper tone kind of in in the bottoms and then some brighter bits at the top. I also think I might cheat and bring out our buddy the uh, fluorescent or fluorescent red, excuse me, just to um, add a few a few kisses on those clouds. A little something just right here. So again, it's a pretty dry brush, just trying to drop some pigment down. So uh, Holly, did my did I answer your question okay about um, the taking the breaks? And then we'll have a little something coming right off the right off the page and then kind of sneaking on page here a little bit off in the distance. All right. So now we're going to add a little bit of depth in here. I'm going to grab some of that dioxazine and smush it in here into that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little risky here. I feel like that's pretty dark in comparison to our cloud color. So we're going to just kind of Offload a little first, but I'm offloading on my palette because I'm going to come back and use some of that paint, but I want to add just a little bit kind of mostly along the bottom. Now this is still looking a little rough, but you know, you have the dark parts kind of on the bottom, kind of on the bottom. You can get a few little bits, especially in the, in the parts where it starts to rise up. And so for those of you who are um, in the inner circle, my members, um, we also do a kind of a, a pretty decent cloud tutorial in the Beach Ball Project, if you're interested in giving that a try. Okay, so that's already, I mean, that's not bad for a quick, a quick sketch of clouds. I'm not done, I promise, I'm not done. I'm gonna come in and just grab some of this white. And I'm just going to mix it over here with whatever purple I happen to have on my brush. So you can see if this was the base color for the clouds and this was the, the deep color, then this is my kind of my highlight. And in fact, I don't think I need the fluorescent. I can just add kisses of kisses of baby thing. And I think we'll be able to get away with it. So Holly says, yep, I think I'm just not used to the idea. So even with a little paint, you get fixated. Gotcha. All right, too much paint on my brush. And I just know that because it's going on really, really thick and just trying to add some. So you're going to go easy on this light color, right? And it's so tempting to just, you know, throw a cloud out there and call it good. I've got a lot of paint on my brush, even though it doesn't look like it. We're still kind of in the dry brushing zone. So kind of just dabbing bits. And it's okay if you can kind of see your 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 um your brush marks because again we're just adding some texture and we definitely want that little bit of white all right kind of along the tops a little bit in here because we have some just kind of kiss on the tops there a little bit in here We'll get the basics and then we'll come back and do it. Just a quick evaluation, see where we're at. Getting kind of some funny, some funny textures and shapes from this brush here. I probably could have used a, a different, like a rounder brush that had a little bit more even bristles. This one comes to a tapers to a beautiful point. It's making things a little bit more, um, a little bit, a little bit more frustrating. And Linda says, I've been watching you pretty much all day. Ah, so what tutorials have you been watching today, Linda? 
And I'm hoping that you're doing some painting too. Okay, so some of this white is starting to dry. Now I'm coming through and just kind of doing little touch-ups, getting a few whiter, brighter highlights. And I don't even know if we're going to need that pink. We might be able to get away with not even using the bright pink, although it would be super fun. Okay, and so Holly says when we're talking about the whole offloading thing, she says, yep, I'm just not used to the idea. So even a little paint, I get fixated. Did I read that aloud already? I don't remember, but I totally understand that. I feel like art is a really good thing for you, Holly. It forces you to relax and let go a little bit. All right, so now I'm grabbing some pure white because I'm noticing that these, these lighter colors, they keep drying just a little darker than I'd like them to, and I want a couple of really bright spots. So again, trying not to cover too much, but it's just adding little kisses along the tops. So now I'm looking at this and like, wow, okay, the mountains are pretty plain, but we've got like these, these cool clouds that are happening. But why not, right? They're starting to look a little furry too down at the bottom. A little furry. So I think I would be using, I would next time use a different brush, maybe something more like or is a good crappy brush that would be perfect for this? This is a good crappy brush. Can you see the difference how this one tapers to like a fairly sharp, I mean, considering sharp point, whereas this guy kind of is a blunt round. So I would say that the blunt round would probably be better for, better for clouds. In fact, now that I've grabbed it, I'm like, woo, let's do the thing. Cause because I'm getting all these like sharp edges with the pointy guy. And whereas with a blunt round, I'm more likely to get a little bit softer. So I could even come in with that blunt guy and kind of soften, soften a few of the brush, the brush strokes. So, and again, I want to say uh, artist loft necessities. This is probably one of those things that was in like the 10 pack of brushes. So, you know, nothing fancy here but I am really, really, really excited this year. I'm going to start because, you know, it's like 22 bucks, like a, a tube or something. I'm going to start picking up some of the, the high end golden paints, maybe like one tube a month, like nothing overboard. Like I want to go simple. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like this brush so much better. All right. Oop. And this little wispy guy is so quiet. We can barely see him. There you go. We got, whoop, come on. A little bit of dark something under there. So there, now we've got some clouds. They're way more interesting and exciting than the mountains themselves. It happens sometimes. So maybe I'll add a little highlight on our mountains. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll do, we'll do a cool landscape tutorial at some point. I used to, landscapes used to be like my most favorite thing. There you go. Look at that. It's just like a little highlight where you got a little bit of, a little bit of sun just kind of on it. Yeah. So the pure white was a little funky, but when I add a bit of, a little bit of purple to it, to, oh, nope, not there, to kind of help it, then it starts to be more interesting. And you can kind of just add a little bit of texture, and it shows some of the shapes of those mountains. Yeah, that's that's what we needed. So I'm just grabbing now a little bit of white pink, no rinsing, but again, if you are feeling like you've got too much stuff on your, on your brush and it's messing up, then you offload. I got offload. I got too much on mine. So coming back a little bit more purple in here. Cause that got a little too pink. Well, something in here, maybe too, a little hidden kind of, a little hidden something. I don't know. We're playing, right? We're just having fun. Again, we still have maintained that sense of a pyramid. And that's really kind of what I was trying to illustrate today. So I hope you guys have had fun doing this. Um, or at least watching and maybe, maybe you'll, you'll give it a try, you know, when you get some downtime doing something like this. All right. That doesn't work right there. We're going to add some more purple to it. It got mushy, it got mushy. So I'll just blend the purple up into this guy so that here, come on, come on, come on. So remind me guys, what color scheme did we use today on this? What color scheme did we use today? 
analogous, right? Okay. Oh yeah. One more quick reminder. So I think uh, most of you who are watching live with me right now, y'all already know this, but we tend to get a lot of folks watching on replay. So this Saturday, January 15th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, Eastern, 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 11 Eastern, nine mountain time. We're going to do this uh, stitched to my heart design and it is definitely mixed media. We've got some modeling paste and all sorts of things. I'm going to do this one live. So please join me. It can only be done here in my groups, um, whether it's the Let's Paint with Blue Cat or the, um, or the Inner Circle. Inner Circle, guys, you get the all access pass to everything. Um, let's see here. So Linda says, I've watched the Cactus Mix Media, just going through all the tutorials in the Inner Circle, finding your way around, ordering some mermaid brushes. Oh, she got the mermaid brushes. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh, oh, we got to untape. Okay, we'll call it a day. And we untape. And you know, oops, well, there goes that piece of tape. Like somebody got a goober in there for standard protocol. This is like my favorite part now. I used to never tape my stuff and I would just sort of sketch around, but oh my gosh, I just love that part about like peeling the, the, ta the tape off. Even though my edges aren't perfectly crisp, suddenly you have this thing which looks like you could just throw it on a greeting card. All right, so recap for those of you who are joining us late or towards the end. We've been doing this for about half an hour, but we're covering composition. And so we talked about pyramid being one of the core elements of composition. And we talked about a couple of different ways that one could do that. We did mountains because I didn't feel like doing bears today. The um, the Virgin Mary with, with the baby Jesus and the... Um, and, uh, John the Baptist is one of the most painted pyramids ever. Um, and then there's our, there's our bears just for fun. And so here's what we kind of ended up painting to kind of illustrate that concept. So if you sort of scroll back to the beginning, once this is on replay, you can watch the whole thing and let me know what you think. If you love this, share it, invite people to the Let's Paint group. And again, join me on Saturday at 11, 15, 11. Eastern time. God, you guys, my brain is like, bleh. join me 11 Eastern. Um, and we will do stitch to my heart, mixed media Valentine project. And this is like super textural. Like this is super bumpy and it's fun and all that stuff. All right, you guys, it's been good. I will see you next time. Oh, and ha Holly says analogous. Very good. All right. See you guys. Bye.